Hello and welcome to Searching the Scriptures, a daily podcast where Bible topics will be discussed and Bible questions will be given Bible answers. No opinion, just Bible. For this episode, we're going to be dealing with the question, what can Christians do? This is a question that often Christians ask, what can I do? And it is a good question to ask. But when we ask it, there we must have a realization that there are some things that we cannot do. For instance, we cannot save the world, the entire world. And by this, I recognize that it is God's word that saves the entire world, that personally I don't save them, that God saves them. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about when we teach the gospel, sometimes we get discouraged because someone rejects it. We cannot save the entire world because the entire world is not going to be saved. God wants them to be saved, yes, but the entire world will not be saved because some will reject the word of God. But in saying that, the gospel must go out to the whole world. If we cannot go personally, we need to encourage those who can. We need to send those who can. We have limitations in that we cannot save the entire world. We even can't save all of our friends, family, and people. Paul couldn't. Paul wanted all Jews to be saved. He wanted all Gentiles as well, but he was a Jew. He couldn't even get all Jews to come to Christ. And we can't make all people love Jesus. There are some people who just will not. They reject Jesus all throughout. Whether they're religious or not, People reject Jesus. We cannot do that. But there are things that we can do. First of all, we can pray regularly to God. We need to pray personally every day. We have the opportunity when we get up to pray to God, to thank Him for another day. We have the ability, and, the, and uh, Jesus commanded us to pray, giving thanks for our daily food. We should pray to God before we go to bed that he has kept us safe throughout the day. But there, these are not just the only t- uh, times that we are to pray. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says we are to pray without ceasing. There are times when we need to pray to, uh, for God to forgive us of our sins because we do sin and we ca- could sin throughout the day. We shouldn't wait for a, a time of prayer to ask for forgiveness. We should pray when we know we've sinned. We need to repent of it, confess our sins to God, and ask God to forgive us. We need to cast all our cares on God, 1 Peter 5, verse 7. These are the things that we can do. We should pray that the gospel be spread and be involved in doing that, even though we realize we will not save everybody. We can pray regularly to God next thing we can do is we can resist the devil. In 1 Peter 5, verses 8 and 9, we read, Be sober, be, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about, seeking whom he may devour, whom, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. We can resist the devil. We can do so with God's help. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13 says, God provides us a way of escape. God has helped us in resisting the devil. Let's not think we are alone. We have God's word that we can use to resist the devil. We have God's way of escape that we can use to resist the devil. We can do that, but we need to do that. We can have purpose of heart, determination to serve God. My dad would call it the gump to be a Christian. In Acts 11 verses 23 to 27 we read, Who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all that with the purpose of heart they would cleave to the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Spirit and of faith and much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. We can purpose in our heart, determine to be a Christian, even when the world will not, even when some of our friends may leave the church, may leave the faith. We can have purpose of heart. We can determine to serve God. 
we can have the gump to be a Christian. We need to do this. That's something we can do. And we can have the hope of a Christian, of going to heaven one day. In Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, we're going to read verses 3 to 6. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of truth of the gospel, which has come unto you as it is in all the world and brings forth fruit as it does also in you since the day you heard it and knew the grace of God in truth. If we are a Christian, and we are only a Christian if we have completely obeyed God's word, that means we have heard the word of God, we've believed it, we've repented of our sins, we've confessed Jesus Christ as the Son of God, and we were baptized for the remission of our sins, we become a Christian at that point. And if we remain a Christian, we have this hope. We need to live a godly life daily. Ask for forgiveness of our sins as we have talked about. We have this hope of a Christian. Romans 8 tells us we are saved by this hope. This is the reason we have faith. Not the only reason we have faith, but a reason we have faith. We need to realize that as a Christian, if we are such, we have a hope of heaven. That should keep us going for that goal, to be with God in heaven for eternity. We can have that hope if we are a Christian. However, if we are not a Christian, we do not have that hope. But we can attain it by becoming a Christian. If you are not a Christian, the brethren here in Toronto would love to study the Bible with you so that you could hear the Word of God, believe it, and obey it before it is everlastingly too late. If you'd like to set up a study, you can send us an email at Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. On behalf of the East End Church of Christ in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode. For free online Bible-based material or to get directions to our meeting place, you can visit our website at www.eastendchurch.org. While there, you'll also find links to more of our podcasts as well as links to the live broadcasts of our services. Should you have any questions about this or any of the other podcasts you may have listened to, you may leave a comment below or email us at torontoeastendchurchofchrist at gmail.com. Please join me, the Lord willing, again in the next episode when we will be discussing another topic from God's Word. Goodbye for now, and have a great day.